the Federal Reserve shorthand the Fed may be the most powerful civilian institution in the United States, but all of its powers come directly from your elected representatives, and the Fed's mandates to maintain steady inflation first and foremost, keep unemployment low, and promote economic growth are the result of decades of bipartisan legislation. As our understanding of macroeconomic theory matures over time in the United States, so does the Federal Reserve's responsibilities and techniques for enacting what we call monetary policy. Monetary policy is the kind of economic policy enacted by people we do not directly elect. The members of the Federal Reserve are more or less determined by our president and congressional members. We do not vote any Fed officials into office. The Fed today has three broad tools it can use to influence our macroeconomy. Those are its open market operations, buying and selling bonds, guiding the federal funds rate by typically using the discount rate and changing the required reserve ratio of banks. It can use those tools for expansionary monetary policy, which involves the Fed buying bonds, which increases the demand for bonds, thereby raising the price and reducing the interest rate. At the same time, more cash is pumped into the economy and multiplied by banks, increasing the money supply and putting further downward pressure on interest rates. This closes recessionary gaps between potential output and the economy in the short run and drops our exchange rate as well. The opposite can be done as well. The Fed can sell bonds, which increases the supply of bonds, thereby dropping the price and increasing the interest rate. At the same time, less cash would flow through the economy and less would be multiplied by the banks, decreasing the money supply and putting further upward pressure on interest rates. This closes inflationary gaps between potential output and the economy in the short run and increases our exchange rate. 